What is good? I don't know. How we doing today, uh, Jason? Doing all right. I'm doing okay. I'm making it. Making it. Yeah. How Gosh. about yourself? Oh, uh, you know, just I more, don't care. More. Uh, I know you don't. <laughs> Nobody ever cares how I'm doing. I never get asked. Just made it a point recently to. Uh, Tell me try about to, your feelings. Try to tell you guys that nobody ever asked me about how I'm doing, although mm-hmm. I'm supposed to ask you guys how you're doing, run this ship, write the show, do all these other things. You know, you're over here just making things look pretty. You're like an Instagram model. He's got a oh, nice, that's the nicest thing a you nice, ever said a nice producer behind the <laughs> behind the that really cleans everything up. <laughs> Wait, am I the Instagram model or am I the producer that cleans it up? Oh, I guess I didn't think that out. Both, I guess, you maybe. You mistakenly you know, gave me a bit of a compliment. I mean, well, I, 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 meant, I meant to give you a compliment, but not just to try to... Since when? I meant to give you a compliment. Just water just, out of here. What are we doing? I'm, are we, I'm, I'm hydrating, kids. I'm going to drink this, um, se- this hot seltzer from the revelries. So no uh, no big co tonight. We got a we got a little show for you. We are Hi-hi. slowly transitioning into redraft for the for the month or, or here. We've done a couple of um, live mock drafts, and we were doing dynasty, and we've switched to redraft. We've done two of those now, so we can try to continue to do those at least once a week till the season starts. Um, so make sure you hit that subby button. So we'll do some. We'll also, I'm sure, do some standalone redraft videos. Um, but we'll see what we have. I don't know how much know. time we'll have. We're gonna get there, but we're gonna we're gonna keep some dynasty videos rolling as well. So you know you don't have to tune out. But for the redraft cats, everybody you got to do a couple of redrafts. I mean, everyone's like, oh, once you get in a dynasty, you're like, I'm not doing a redraft anymore. But then you're like, the season comes around and you're like, oh damn, nah, I'm trying to get in some of these redrafts. It's so much easier to hop in a ton of redrafts because yeah. of dynasty. So yeah. All right. Well, what are um, what are we gonna talk about today? Because I'm I'm building a house right now, so I've uh, I've I've I'm, I typically do a lot of the writing yeah. of, of shows around here. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, Casey had a good idea to do some versus videos, but he didn't want to help write them. Ran so, out of time. Uh, I ran out of time. No, you said, fuck you, Jason. So instead instead of helping, all he did was just discourage my ideas and tell me what I was thinking about was dumb. But here we are. We're doing it. Yeah. And it's not like some people say, you know, I'm building the house and because they're having somebody build them a house. I'm actually building my house physically. Mm-hmm, I can tell. Yeah. Those are working hands. Those uh, were beat up. So uh, Mason stood me up for the, just right off the rip, Mason stood me up for, for building the foundation wall. So guess who's building it? Your boy, Casey, building the foundation wall. Never built a foundation wall in my life. Watched a couple of YouTube videos. I heard it was pretty easy to build a wall. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, you just tell people you're building anyway, a wall. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> you actually need it built. Okay. Uh, so, so Casey gave me carte blanche today to talk about what I want to talk about. Well, not really. But I mean, I, I gave you an idea of a show did. and then you, you, you found a, you found a, a little spot that you, that you thought that we hadn't talked about enough. So, and, and, uh, I didn't do it the way you said, uh, for some reason I want to talk about Zeke. All right. So we're going to get into a little Zeke versus today. Yeah. The, the, you've had, there's been multiple shows, multiple long segments of shows where you just bitched about how you could take Ezekiel Elliott. Oh yeah. I'm like the, I'm the perennial Zeke hater, but for some reason I can't quit this guy this year it seems it seems too good um and and i'm gonna go ahead and break another rule casey was like no let's not do multiple players but i won't put zeke up against two guys so go fuck yourself yeah and we've we have already talked about this in in uh some capacity but i don't know let's get into the nitty-gritty so i want to do a couple things here today right obviously put these guys in an order but then maybe see if if one of them is like a stronger trade target because i think any of these guys would be a good acquisition if you're trying to make a championship push um, but we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put up uh, N- Zeke Elliott, Nick Chubb, and Derrick Henry. And uh, we're obviously Supposed talking to be about versus it. not a fucking cage match, but hey. <laughs> it's a triangle match. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, so would you trade for one of these guys first off? Are you down to try to get one of these guys to put on your team? So 
I would trade for any of them. It always comes down to price. Sure. As, as okay, if but any, you're down to roster. Any value, you know, when we talk about players and whether you like them or not, I, I, there's not too many players where I'm like, fuck that guy. Right. Uh, but it, it's mostly just I don't like where he's going. And right now, the first guy on the docket that we're that, that all these guys are versus the 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 people's champ. Yeah. Is uh, is the best value I think right now in 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 fantasy football. He, he definitely is. At least is. the top end of guys. He definitely is, and that's part of why I wanted to make this video was to to see how I felt. Zeke Elliott, that is. And then come out with it. Sorry. Um, so two questions to keep in mind as we go through this. Which one of these players has the better chance of being relevant three years from now? Because I, all, I feel pretty good about all of them being relevant for two years. And then maybe the more important question to keep in mind is which one of these guys is going to score the most points over the next two years, uh, which might be, like I said, more relevant. Um, and I'd also like to point out that you know, in a situation where you're on the draft, on on the clock in a draft, and all these guys are on the board, our mentality would be: if we like them all, we can't really choose one or the other. We would take a little something to move back some, right? Maybe move, uh, let's see, move, um, like maybe move back from 111 to 2 2, or move your 2 2 back to 2 5, and try and move your your third or your fifth round pickup. Which we we do more talking about trades on over on the pleasure chest in the Discord. So make sure you hit that up. Uh, over on patreon.com slash EFF dynasty. Um, but uh, when you're on the clock and you have to make a decision, like I had a hard time when I was just trying to rank these guys and do like my own mock draft. I had a hard time choosing which one I'd want. Um, so we're going to do maybe do another one of these videos and hit us up in the comments below if you guys have any suggestions or think we're dumb. Um, if you got any negativity, let me know in the comments because we're going to see how bad this video does because I'm leading the way here. And uh, if but negative comments help the YouTube algorithm, so we could somehow get some reverse psychology flip this bitch on his head. Anyways, appreciate you guys. Let's go ahead and get into it. The reason why we're here today is Ezekiel Elliott. So let's pull his up, his page up the first. And as we got a little graphic for you with a photo, this man is 26 years old, just turned 26. Happy late birthday, Ezekiel Elliott. He's currently. 14th in the ADP, which is good for RB9. He'll probably slide up to RB8 with Akers probably taking a, a, a step back, which was kind of surprised to see him up that high because in the drafts that we do, he he generally goes later. Um, that was a lot of respect I felt like DLP was giving him. Uh, he's the lowest ADP out of DLF. all these guys we're going to talk about. What did I say? I don't even know. <laughs> I felt like you were talking about an old TV screen. He has... His contract is good for the next two years. They do have an out in 23 uh, with 6.7 million dead, or they could pay him 11 million. Is he going to be relevant at age 28? And are they going to want to pay him $11 million to be a cowboy? Because if you could say yes to those questions, then there's no, no even discussion discussing this further. I don't know how they're going to not pay him $11 million. All right. I like that. Okay. All right. Well, he, well you know. I mean, I guess they could restructure a deal somewhere if they if they had to. But I think you've already kind of, you know, McCarthy has said that Zeke doesn't need to touch the ball 25, 30 times a game, which, you know, is part of the Zeke allure. But to prolong Zeke's career and prolong the greatness of Ezekiel Elliott, um, I'm fine. Tony Pollard is perfectly capable of mm-hmm. it. And, and that's part of the allure, again, of... Of Zeke, of is Zeke to get is that Tony you can Pollard? have Tony Pollard and feel really comfortable with a backup, right? Um, where reach a little bit. Chubb has that kind of as well for the most part. That's a lot more expensive. Um, handcuff. It, it's a lot more expensive, and it's not fun to take Hunt. But, and Derrick Henry Chubb. and Derrick Henry doesn't really have one as, of, as right now. Nobody. We'll get to those guys. But eleven million is a lot to to just not have somebody playing for you. So so if if McCarthy can hold back his carries a little bit. And we'll get to the point. I'll get to a point where I don't think that even really matters. Um, when that, and that'll help prolong his career. Another thing that will help prolong his career is he's reportedly in great shape. He's down 10 pounds to 218, which he hasn't played at since he was at Ohio State University. Hired a personal chef. Got his diet right. His nutrition. You want, you want to see a photo of him shirtless? I mean, it's I, not I super love optional. Love watching. There guys. it is. Yeah, shirtless guys. <laughs> Let's get it, it. Is. If he could just be running through a sprinkler right now, we'd there's, be good. There's maybe Zeke. or somebody baby oiling him up. Cut up. Only way that could be better. Mm, look at that. So that's that's something you want to bank on there, right? To deuce one. All right. Let's bring it back. Where are we at? In all seriousness, okay. This man was RB nine last year. In PPR, which makes sense because he had the fourth most targets with mm-hmm. 73, eighth most receptions with 52. That's good for three and a half a game 
for Zeke, his yeah. workhorse, three and a half receptions, receptions per game. Ninth most slot snaps. I didn't see that coming. And second most in routes run. That is fantastic. No wonder this man was RB9 on a shitbox team after Dak went down. And among other players, which we'll get to. Um, but on top of that, fifth most carries, third and goal line carries, and ninth and evaded tackles. Uh, those are all straight facts and stats to back up what I'm trying to say. Just got to keep it 100 and, mm-hmm. and, and keep it real. That's what we do over here. We're, just, we're not scared of anything. We're just keeping it real. Uh, not scared to speak the truth. Just keeping it 100 every yeah, time. For so, sure. Gotta, just joking around. <laughs> not, I wish I was joking around. I can't not speak the truth. So, I mean, I just... Hey, we keep it real. 100. I think this offense is about to explode. Uh, Pending Dak's shoulder, let's go ahead and just... Let's say that his shoulder's okay. And and if if Dak would have been healthy along with the O-lineman last year, Zeke would have probably be the RB5 right now, or 6, and he'd be like the 6th pick off the board. But because he had a down year, people are like mad at him, right? Which they're returning a ton of key players, not only... Players, but the the offensive coordinators coming back. Kellen Moore turned down the Boise State head coaching job. I think that's probably pretty beneficial. He was down to feed the rock to Zeke, and they have key O line pieces returning. Tyron Smith missed most of last year, and Lael Collins were both out. Travis Frederick retired due to health concerns, um, but but they got Smith and Collins back this off season to pair up with mm-hmm. Zach Martin, who's a freaking stud. He's a monster. And so they're studded out all over the line. They have weapons everywhere on the perimeter. Zeke's in great shape. He's got two more years minimum. Plus, you think they probably no way they can get out of paying him again. I mean, there's never or it's restructuring. Never, I don't ever want to say no way because everybody's always you no know, way you could trade Carson once with that contract. No way you can do yeah. this with that money. No way you can, and, and you certainly can. And Jerry's not above if he thinks Zeke isn't up to snuff. He's got manure. He's looking for a pony. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, Zeke's a pony, so just feed the it, pony. Zeke's a fucking thoroughbred. He is. It's not, yeah. He's not. yeah. <laughs> yes. Do we need to pull the picture back up again? Um, so, I, you, go ahead. That's it. That's okay. all I got for Zeke. I mean, that's a pretty damn good, strong argument, I feel yeah. like. Straight so facts right in your face. What are you going to do to argue it? I mean, so you got setting him, the bar pretty high. Him versus two other guys who basically don't catch footballs. They don't throw it to him. Not that they can't catch footballs. They just don't really throw it to him. You got mm-hmm. a guy out there who's just running routes, doing his thing. While, you know, there was three other very capable receivers out there for uh, the Green Bay Packers, as I was about to say, Andy for Dalton. some reason, for, uh, for the Cowboys. Um, and then, really, at the end of the day, all of this thing, you know, missing this, missing that, doing this, doing this, and was, and was still RB9 on the mm-hmm. season, I believe. And, and I think you just saw worse case scenario for Zeke Elliott and was still RB nine. And like you said, if he wouldn't have had all of those things happen and you know, their offensive line just get decimated Dak, not be around when Dak was around, it was 22 points, 22 points, 27 points, 17 points, 23 points, 20 points. And then, you know, goes out the, goes out week five and Zeke was just absolutely slaying through there. Four targets, seven targets, 11 targets, eight targets, uh, in those games with Dak just absolutely crushing it. And and then Dak goes down and, and Zeke has a couple of, you know, some rough spots and throughout the rest of the uh the rest of the year here, but you know, still does okay. And then if you could manage to get into the playoffs, he you know, he wasn't uh god awful um in week sixteen. That's uh fair. got you seventeen point nine. It wasn't great, but three out of their four stud offensive linemen were gone and their quarterback. Right. He was still okay. He, he was still okay. It, was, it wasn't great. You but I but I'm like I think that was worst case scenario. Right. And if he did like you said, if he did if he was healthy, if everything was healthy, if the ecosystem was was Ooh. at least semi healthy, I think you know, you're talking about the RB four, five, six, because I mean, he's the same age as Alvin Kamara. He's basically the same age as Dalvin Cook. Uh, Zeke has one slip up here, and now he's you know a mid second round pick, where those other guys are still basically the same age, and you know going Top still five. in the same spot that they always went in. So, you know, that's why that's why I come off saying that he's a big one of the biggest values because I you know he has always been up there with those guys always been the top of a startup guy has a has a slip up because the ecosystem was in peril and 
you know, still wasn't the absolute worst. Um, but you know, there was a couple of weeks that were some bummers for you there. Um, but it wasn't awful. I, I, I own, I would say that, you know, I'd be buying him if I could, but pretty much any dynasty team that I have has Zeke. So that would be the only reason that I would be selling Zeke. If I can, once he's in, you can't sell him now. Once he's in season and and doing what he does, uh, I, I might be okay with selling some of my Zeke assets. And of course, if you're not a competing team and you, you, you feel like you're going into a rebuild, then of course you want to sell. But I will have a team that I made in draft, drafted Zeke. I got d- traded for Dalvin Cook. Um, and I've been in the playoffs, in the money, every single year I've had that team and just couldn't quite get over the hump. Finally got over the hump this year, traded for Miles Sanders uh, after Will Fuller went down. Um, and, and ended up winning the championship in that league finally after three years of third, second, and now I got first. Uh, but that's just what a guy like Zeke Elliott will do for you. I got just a thoroughbred as, as an RB1. That's what any of these guys will do for uh, you. And that's oh. why it's worth taking them even at an older age in the top of a draft because right. you're trying to compete. Because you're trying to win because we're playing for money. Right? right. We're playing for some money here. Right. And in, in redraft, I mean, he's a, he's a top Top. five six seven Man. two three four wherever you want to take him in the first round right um gotta take him so all right well should we take it to chubb yeah sure let's hit the button there he is running and, through and the rain one more thing with zeke is that you know there really hasn't been too many injury issues uh right when you scroll over to the chubb thing the first thing that pops into my head is you know big co's kind of been slightly scared off his rb throne with rb's injuries and with a guy like nick chubb before we even kick kick off and, and i know you got some good stuff on i'm gonna him, take it back to the main here is uh you know there is there was a, a pretty terrible knee injury in college and now maybe maybe nothing ever comes to that again but it definitely gives me pause on workhorse running backs and now you do have uh, kareem hunt in there who can who can take some off of chubb's plate uh but for some reason, it makes me a little, especially with all of the recent kind of injuries lingering, maybe falling out of your prime a little faster than you thought. Todd Gurley, same college, you know, bad injury, fell off the map, got rode hard and... and uh, Put away wet? <laughs> I guess. Uh, so, you know... Still getting paid from the Rams. Makes you a little so. uncomfortable, and I, I haven't been able to... ever. We have... Uh, Nick Chubb in a, in a league with a bunch of dynasty guys. And I've thrown his name in the chat multiple times that he's available. I haven't had one ounce of interest from a bunch of dynasty analysts, uh, you know, and not, you know, not just like nobody, some pretty heavy, heavy hitters in the industry that, that we play with, or at least once were heavy hitters in the industries. Fair. Um, so, you know, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of interest from those guys necessarily. And for me personally, in the end of that first round where Chubb's always there, I always have a really, like, I almost never take him. Yeah. He's tough. And redraft, I'm in. And dynasty, I'm not saying I'm out. I just, it, it doesn't feel great. All right. Well, I took it to Chubb. You took it back to Zeke. And then somehow you made it to Chubb. We'll get back to, we'll fully go to Chubb here. All right, yeah. You now we can fully go to Chubb. Uh, but so he's 25. He's a little younger. He's like a half year younger than Zeke. Uh, his ADP is currently at 12. And he is the RB8, which will probably bump to seven when Akers falls. He did get a new three-year contract. So the Browns don't seem too worried about that knee. Three-year extension, $36 million, $20 million guaranteed. Um, that O-line is returning all five starters, which was like the top offensive line in the yeah. league last year. So those are all things that make you pretty excited for Nick Chubb. Like you said, that knee injury is a bummer. But the biggest thing I think is 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 probably got to be Kareem Hunt, right? Even more so than the injury because he's been playing fine with the injury. It doesn't seem like there's like that could pop up. It could pop up out of nowhere. I get that 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 does need to be somewhat of a concern, and and maybe that gives Zeke a slight edge when when he doesn't have a major knee injury on his on his hands. But I mean, Kareem Hunt is not going anywhere this season, and probably not next season. They do have an out in twenty two. Uh, where they could cut him at two point eight million dead, or they can keep him for five million. So I would assume they're going to keep him for that five million. Mm-hmm. He takes not only targets, 
But he takes carries and he takes goal line carries away from uh, right. Nick Chubb. Hunt averaged 13.7 points per game. Imagine how good Chubb will be without Hunt there. Like, because Chubb crushes, but he can't, he can't get that, that floor, uh, that, that, that PPR floor that helps <clears throat> with the ceiling. He was RB8, RB11 last year, Nick Chubb. He only played 12 games, so that's yeah, pretty that's strong. Huge, huge. That's Missed fucking four awesome. with an MCL sprain, so there's a little bit of knee resurgence. I don't know if it was same knee or different knee. I forget. It was his left knee, so I don't know exactly which knee he messed up in college, but the injury recently was to his left knee. Um, he averaged 17.3 points a game, which was good for seventh, right? Amongst running backs. Mm-hmm. So he was strong. Six evaded tackles. He's awesome. Six evaded tackles only played three fourths of the year. Seventh in goal line carries. Uh, but the kicker, he only had 16 catches on 18 targets where hunts over there gobbling up 51 targets and 38 receptions. So barring injury to hunt, it just seems like Chubb's ceiling is capped a little bit compared to where Zeke's is. And after two more years, Hunt could be out of there. Chubb will be going into his twenty age 27 season, which doesn't sound like the worst. 27 and a half. Consider, well, he'll be tw- it'll be 27 going into that year, right? He turns 28 in December, late December, I believe. And so with taking that in consideration, the next guy we're about to talk about, Derrick Henry, is that old right now. Mm-hmm. And he's very relevant coming into this year. So, I, I mean, I think I could see Chubb being relevant three years from now for sure. Yeah. But you have to sacrifice some ceiling in the meantime. Yeah. I mean, I think he showed you that the sacrifice is is is, not, is worth taking. It just – I think you're, you're capping what could be a top – three or four running back ceiling with Chubb. It's not necessarily that it's capping a ceiling of a, of a great running back or a good running back to not be great. He's definitely great. Um, but he just, is, it's, but it's so is Zeke. Taking him know? to be that well, and Zeke was already, he, he wasn't getting capped because Zeke was already being drafted up in that high threshold of, of league winning awesome running backs, whereas Chubb probably does get the, the big time RB ceiling capped with with the big time. He's already big time. It's hard to. I'm trying. I'm trying to put into words exactly what I'm trying to say because I'm not not trying to downplay like seventeen like seventeen points a game through twelve games is is ridiculous and two hundred and seven points on twelve games is ridiculous. I mean Zeke played. I think Zeke missed one game and he only had like eighteen more points than. Nick Chubb or something like that. Like, I mean, Nick Chubb was outstanding. So like, he doesn't necessarily just like Derrick Henry, he doesn't need the receptions to be good. Right. Um, which is, you know, a, a mind boggling thing for a lot of people nowadays. And it doesn't, it just the safety of those couple of grabs a game to make your game. So it's not just a terrible game because you didn't get in the end zone and the defense shut you down a little bit. Um, just maybe isn't quite there. I mean, um, you can get, 20 the, carries for 100 yards, and that'd be an amazing game from a running back standpoint, but that's 10 points right? without a score or some right. catches. And, I mean, he might have a catch or two in a game. I mean, it's a, it's a catch. Well, I mean, that's more than it's, a catch a game. It's just a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and it does, but the, Kareem Hunt signing the two-year deal definitely – yeah, puts a damper on the on the Chubb parade slightly, but they're going to be. I think they're going to be a pretty heavily run team. The like you said, the offensive line is great. I don't know why I have a problem taking Nick Chubb. It's almost irrational. Doesn't mm-hmm. make that much sense. Um, but Todd Gurley's knee. Yeah, and I, and I don't ever really get caught up in that kind right. of stuff. Like I just kind of just do my thing and have. Hey, shit happens. Anything could happen. Like. Mahomes could break his neck, and hey, I mean, hey, not hey, that hey. not quarterbacks don't get hurt like that very often, but like you know, shit happens to players. Remember well, when Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone, and that was going to be the end. Yeah, of well, he, yeah, he's the MVP this year. Yeah, and nobody gives a shit about that collarbone anymore. Uh-uh. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I it's irrational. It's irrational on my end to take it, but it seems like it's almost just and i i don't own chubb too many places um we traded what new Hopkins in some package to get you traded chubb? yeah nuke and, and melvin some. gordon away in the middle of the season last year to get 
Chubb and a bunch of picks and Paris but Chubb Campbell. was missing time. At the, he missed in the middle of the season there. Yeah. So we capitalized right there on a guy ship chasing. Right. So and and so I've, I've tried to – our team is not in the – like we need to do a little bit of retooling before we're ready to go. So it might be a year or two and we could be wasting the prime of, of that running back's career. So we've been – that's the reason why I'm trying to sell him in that particular league. We inherited that team. Um, I'm kind of been reeling ever since we didn't completely tear it down, which was probably a mistake off the rip. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, but th- there isn't, there hadn't been any interest in Nick Chubb in that league. I think just like Ezekiel Elliott, it's not going to be until Nick Chubb is on the field doing what Nick Chubb does because it's very, I mean, he's, he's as good as Dalvin Cook. He's as good as Derrick Henry. He's as good as Alvin Kamara. So, I mean, it's, you're almost getting the discount price on a cheaper guy. But then, he doesn't catch the balls. But he doesn't catch the ball. But I mean, still average seventeen point three points um, with, with any of those. That's three point three points less than than uh, than uh, Derrick Henry. Yeah, so like Alvin Kamara and Dalvin Cook are up in the mid twenties. They certainly are. So that that's they certainly are. That's why there is a separation, and and we're trying to figure out how much of a separation there should be. I don't have a problem taking. Chubb, I think I'll take Zeke first, though. But we'll, we'll, well exactly, we'll exactly, that. though. Yeah. So right, right there, it is. Like I, I would just if I'm in the position where I have to take Chubb, I'm gonna probably try to move back, and I think I would just rather take Ezekiel Elliott and and get paid to take Ezekiel Elliott, essentially. Right, because in pretty much every draft I've seen, Chubb is basically the RB six off the board, right, for the most part. Yeah. Or, I mean, on DLF, let's take it to the next guy. You ready to you yeah. ready to move it along? Let's take it to Derrick Henry. His ADP is a whopping seven, which I rarely see him go that high in a draft. No, no mock that we've done at all with our patrons and some, and we invite other people in there too. And we've been doing mocks since like February. I don't think there is one single draft that he's gone anywhere near that. Why is that Derrick Henry moving to the side? You don't have to take it off, but you <laughs> move it to the side. Anyway, back to the slide before it goes out on me. He's 27 years old, turned that in January, so he's a little old. They do have a contract out in 2022 with $6 million dead, or they pay him $12 million. So if he's still rolling, then I think that's that's he has the potential to be relevant in three years from now. But he's going to be pretty old, although he does have fairly low mileage on his, on his – uh, on his odometer there because he only topped out at 215 carries in the first three years of his career then and i think it was like 100 in one year and like a 125 or something like that low carries early on his career but um you know i don't know if they're going to want to pay him 12 million dollars in his age 30 year old season uh but they do have a strong well it's a pretty decent offensive line to go with a really strong overall offensive supporting cast so it's a strong situation and there's nobody there to take any work from him which right. is a little weird that they don't throw him the ball more because when they do, you know, he's not he's not terrible. He could house it, which he had nineteen. I think it's almost like uh, catching people by surprise when it happens. Right, right. Um, but that O line, uh, Taylor Luan, he'll be back. He only played like two hundred snaps last year, and they hope the second round pick Dylan Radens out of North Steroid. Dakota State University. Steroid shampoo is that what got Luan? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, two years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, ost- ostrogen. Mm. Ostrogen? Ostrogen. Clearly, I'm not on the roids because I'm, I'm like a buck 66 soaking wet. Yeah, I mean, but your <laughs> balls are huge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I made that. Isn't that what happens when you take steroids? I think they get smaller. Oh, they get smaller? Yeah. Ah, that's what's been. I got that wrong. <laughs> Whoops. That's why that joke never works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. They got Roger Saffold and a pretty strong center, Ben Jones. Uh, overall, this unit excels versus the run, and they should be primed to do so again. They bring in Julio. Uh, Derrick Henry was first in rushing yards and carries last year, 2,027. Uh, 17 big old tutties. 17. TDs. Tutties. TDs. <laughs> it's so hard to say that word. TDs. Tutties. Yeah. And so he counters the lack of re- reception. Production. He loves ball. He, he does. He loves it. It's all about ball. He's just a high character He guy. likes doing push-ups and workouts with big chains on. That's all I know. I wish, uh, I, wish I had a picture of him queued up with his shirt off. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I don't... 
I guess I got Zeke. I guess I got Henry here at the end. You know, I think you read him in the order that I feel about him. Yeah, I think I did, too. I probably should have saved Zeke to the end. I really hit the panache right at the mm-hmm. beginning. Gave the people gave what it, they want. Gave it away. You gave it away. Yeah. Put the cart before the horse. Let's put them all three up here. Let's put Let's let's throw them up. So see what we got here. Right. I, similar in age, similar contracts, similar offensive lines. And we got some production to go in Zeke's favor for receptions. There's, there's, you know, Derrick Henry, like I said, in a lot of the drafts that we do ends up falling like back of the second round kind of guy. Um, and at that point, then I think he's a good value. Uh, and, and you got to be willing to, to go now. And I feel like you could s- sell a midseason if you didn't build a great team off of a maiden uh, startup draft. And to somebody who's trying to win right now and wants to win some money uh, year one or two, which, you know, I like to try to win money year one or two to just feel like, you know, hey, I'm in this league. It's paid for itself for a while. Um, and I'm, you know, I've, I feel confident in myself to not be too long in a, in a rebuild phase, be able to, if I'm managing a team, to be able to turn it over in a year or two if it's, if it's not great and have the realization that that's going on. Um, Derrick Henry, for me, has always been a guy that I've just never really been on. Um, and Yeah. Well, his first so two years it, in the league were tough to stick with him, and then I tried to come in and defend him in the year three, and I was like, he could, I could see him getting 1,000 yards and 10 touch tutties. And uh, y'all like, no way. And then like the last four games, he rushed for like 1,000 yards yeah. and 10 touchdowns. <laughs> and then it's really been on a tear since then. Yeah, well, he's been great. He's been for the great. next two years after that. He's been absolutely outstanding. And, you know, RBs overall have a stigma of wearing out, but, I mean – it's a new dawn. It's a new day. I, I, I think. Well, Nina Simone. I think there could be plenty of guys who can play decent into their twenty sevens, twenty eights, twenty nines, thirties. The the problem with the Derrick Henry is that uh, the way he's built and and the the style of play that Six, he has three four hundred pounds doesn't necessarily lend to that. So that's I, again what scares me off. But I, I get. I, you kind of almost always default to players and and I'm aware of it. It's not like I'm unaware that I do this. Like I've never really been in camp Derrick Henry and redraft the last two years. I thought I told you when we were wrapping, getting into getting into the season, I was like, shit, maybe Derrick Henry, there was all these contract issues and all these other things. Like maybe Derrick Henry's got to be the RB one. Cause he's, there's no problems with him and you know, he's going to get the work and, and right. heading into Kamara a redraft in season. And- right. And Dalvin and yep. uh, Zeke, and all sorts of shit. Yep. Um, Finally, them boys got paid. Uh, maybe Zeke wasn't last year. I don't remember. Um, but there was all, all, all kinds of, of tomfoolery going on. And, you know, again, I'm 100% in on taking Derrick Henry as high as you want to take him in redraft. It, it's just in Dynasty, I just, I just, I'm scared of him. And it's, it's taken me too long to be like, damn i really like this guy and now it's like it feels like it's too late for me to really get on him on the price tag you have to pay especially when you are citing public things like that of him being that high in a lot of like i said a lot of drafts we do he ends up falling um and at that point then i'd be okay with with taking him but i've 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 kind of missed the boat on derrick henry and again i fuck i i feel terrible not really singing nick chubb's praises because i think he's fucking great um, and it's just again. Well, you battled these, for these, him back when we were arguing whether you should take Sony, Michelle, or yeah. Nick Chubb in a, in a rookie draft. You won that argument big yeah. time. Yeah. So I mean, Henry. A lot def- of people were out on Chubb because oh, of that for injury, sure. you know. For sure. And you Henry's- can see him getting better coming back from it, and he works hard. He keeps his head down. He doesn't give oh, a fuck. A, He's a typical good, like, just a good dude. Good, great dude. Yeah. Um, and great you know, teammate. You can see why they wanted to extend him. Just keeps his mouth shut. Yep. Does his thing. Yeah, I would. I got to put Derrick Henry at the back end of this list now, based strictly on age and and what we kind of know about running backs and the fact that he doesn't catch a lot of balls. I mean, so somebody else is probably sitting there saying, "You're an idiot. You got to take Derrick Henry first because all he's done is crush." And if he again, if you're looking at this in two or three year windows, if, if all these guys just crush for the next two years, I don't think you're really going wrong with any of them. It's just Derrick Henry's a year older and built a little. Now, maybe it maybe it works out because he is built just uh, this gigantic, ridiculous human being and that moves like that. Um, and maybe maybe he just is. Maybe he's able to shed some weight later on in his career. Maybe, he, maybe he's just fantastic until he's 29, 30. Low tread. 
Early on. Yeah. It's not like he's been toting the rock 300 times every year. I, I feel like there's definitely a little something to that, uh, but I, I feel like it's just overall as you just get older as a human being. Getting old sucks. Yeah. They always said it, and I was like, ah, you're just a bitch. You're just a whiner. Yeah. You're just a wiener, but... Well, it's you got real. what are your closing uh, thoughts here? You put this all together. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to take Zeke. That was the point. That was the point. I thought I felt that way before this exercise. And I was like, well, maybe I could find some way to like work a year three into this mix and make that like the caveat. Or maybe I could find someone who will do better in the first two, like the next two years. But I just don't see a better situation with a better opportunity, with a better talent than Zeke Elliott out of these guys right now. I mean, you could argue that Henry's opportunity and situation is probably the best. It's just, do you, the, the, the year older is just in the ways heavily, I guess, on the, in the back of your mind there. It, it, does, it, do, it does for me somewhat. And again, I, like I said, I've just... I, I try not to do it, and I but you do it a little bit, and I try to just to hate ADPs and not players, and it's not that I hate Derrick Henry. It just took me too long to get on him, and now I feel like the the prime window has maybe passed. We've come away with you know I, I feel like Zeke's probably one of the best values in the draft. I, I don't feel great about drafting Nick Chubb in the first round. This is my summarization of my thoughts, um, and I would trade back to try to get Zeke. Although it's probably irrational, just take Chubb because he's fucking awesome. Um, and you know, I, I missed the boat on Derrick Henry and still fuck that guy, but not really. Cause I think, I do think he's proven time and time again that he's fucking awesome. Um, so yeah, that's true. It's just, he, he's coming off a better year. That's why he's higher in the ADP than Zeke. I think that's pretty much it. And I mean, a lot of people, whether they do it or not, and I, and we were all guilty of it, play dynasty a little bit more like redraft, just judging off of the Sometimes, previous year. It a lot on of the people. league you're in, but yeah. I feel like when I'm with friends, yes, but when I'm with online Twitter peoples, oh no, I think I think they they fall the, maybe even more guilty of it too because at least the home leagues are like just at least ha, are they got their they got like their guys and they'll stick to their guns because they're not being swayed by all this other information that's that's out there so they'll just be like oh, I don't give a shit what happened last year this is my dude yeah so. Well, that's uh, Zeke's not my dude, but he is this year. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've again, I think he's one of the best values going right now in the top half of the draft, top three rounds, top four rounds of the draft. So, all right. Well, I pulled the end outro music up for your pleasure. We're gonna get out of here in like forty minutes. How about that? All right. Talked about three players. Probably in 40 still too minutes. long, but probably hey. a little too long, but. I don't know that we really solved any mysteries either. Scooby Doo, they got it done in thirty minutes, so. You gotta take Zeke. If it wasn't for you meddling kids and that dog of yours. I would have gotten away with a crime. <laughs> like, so like Scoob. Man, I haven't watched an episode of Scooby Doo. You watch any of those movies? I don't think so. Mm-mm. Can't. All right, well, if y'all watch this show, hit me up with a subby. Let me get that subby, hit a notey. Let me get a comment in the bottom. <laughs> Saying thumbs up, thumbs down, you suck. Let, let Casey write the shows from now on. You got anything else? <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace. <laughs>